Welcome to the Campbell Museums. A mundane object like eyeglasses has many stories it can tell. In this video, I explore just a few of these stories. Think of this video as the abridged history behind eyeglasses. This video is part of our What's in the Box series, where I pull a box from storage and see what we find inside. So check out the box number four playlist for more. Please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel to show us some love. You can also support the Campbell Museums by becoming a member. Glasses are steeped in social stereotypes. They can symbolize wisdom, nerdiness, aging, and even sex appeal. Today, glasses are often seen as an extension of self-expression, but more critical than creating iconic personas, glasses are a tool that millions of us rely on to get through the day. Let's explore. Letters, however small and indistinct, are seen enlarged and more clearly through a globe or glass filled with water. Before glasses, people observed natural phenomena that helped magnify letters on paper. In addition to water-filled glasses, reading stones were also an early magnifying tool. It wasn't until the end of the 13th century in Northern Italy that we find objects that resemble modern glasses. That said, these glasses had more in common with magnifying glasses and did not use prescriptions to correct eyesight. During this time, eyeglasses were associated with persons of importance, like monks and scholars, since glasses were only owned by those who were educated enough to be able to read and wealthy enough to afford glasses. For people who did not understand the science behind glasses, they were seen to have almost magical powers, possibly in league with the devil. Glasses that addressed nearsightedness and farsightedness likely arose about 150 years later in the 15th century. The demand for eyeglasses increased dramatically with the invention of the printing press in the 1440s and a shift towards more public education. Prior to this, only the elite could be expected to read. As more people had access to literature and the ability to read it, the demand for eyeglasses grew. By the 1600s, spectacles were widely available, but were a bit challenging to keep on one's face. During the 1700s, as literacy rates climbed in Western Europe, more people found it inconvenient to hold glasses up to their face as they read. This led to glasses that look like our modern glasses, with temple pieces that wrap around the ears and allow people to wear glasses all day. Even though glasses began to be used in larger numbers, it was seen as unattractive for women to use them. Glasses could also carry a stigma of signaling that the wearer was sick or elderly. This stigma led to the use of handheld eyeglasses. That said, in America, Benjamin Franklin gladly wore glasses and was an early adopter, and some claim inventor, of bifocals. In 1785, Benjamin Franklin wrote, as I wear my own glasses constantly, I have only to move my eyes up or down as I want to see distinctly far or near, the proper glasses being always ready. Although eyeglasses had become quite practical by the 1800s, it was still not considered attractive to wear them in public. In his story, The Spectacles, Edgar Allan Poe poked fun at the vanity tied to not wearing glasses. My eyes are large and gray, and although in fact they are weak to a very inconvenient degree, I have resorted to every remedy, short of wearing glasses. Being youthful and good-looking, I naturally dislike these and have resolutely refused to employ them. I know nothing indeed which so disfigures the countenance of a young person or so impresses every feature with an air of demureness, if not altogether sanctimoniousness, and of age. With this kind of attitude, it is no wonder that many Victorians decided to wear glasses only when needed. Women who could afford it continued to use handheld designs to avoid wearing glasses on their faces. If you did decide to wear glasses, they looked a bit like this. If this wasn't your style, the monocle was also a popular choice during the 1800s, especially stylish among the wealthy. Thank you. 
As an aside, prior to the 1800s, people were not given proper eye exams and prescriptions. Instead, they often met with a traveling salesman and tried on lenses of varying strength until they found the best pair for their needs. During the 1800s, formal fittings began to take place, and in the 1860s, Dutch ophthalmologist Hermann Snellen invented the iconic and often daunting standardized eye chart that we know so well today. At the turn of the 20th century, the pince-nez, like we have in our box, was the most commonly worn form of eyeglasses for both sexes. They were usually worn attached to a cord, chain, or ribbon, which was attached to the vest or dress. An 1883 article in the New York Times declared that they were considered so stylish that some young ladies and gentlemen were adopting them simply because they think it gives them a distinguished appearance. Finally, we start to see glasses step out of the medical world and into the fashion world. During the early 1900s, large round spectacles of real or imitation horn or tortoise shell, often referred to as horn rims, became fashionable for both men and women. Our pair looks to be made of plastic. Horn rims were considered to give an air of wisdom, seriousness, and sincerity to the wearer. Similar to the vibe way back in the 1300s, when only literate scholars had access to them. Quite the opposite of bold horn rim glasses were glasses that were practically invisible, like this pair from our box. This invisible style hints at the persistent belief that glasses were a necessary evil. One poem by Dorothy Parker from the 1920s states that men seldom make passes at girls who wear glasses. In 1939, thanks to the designer Altina Saunders, we see the emergence of the Harlequin frame, which are considered the first glasses designed solely with the idea of improving a woman's appearance. From this point forward, glasses began to be taken seriously as a fashion accessory to be coordinated with one's complexion and outfit. For men, heavier metal and plastic brow bar frames and horn rims were the most popular styles. While trends have come and gone during the 20th and 21st centuries, eyeglasses have consistently maintained their fashionable standing. And with so many styles available today, there's a pair for each individual's taste. Today, we don't think twice about the luxury of wearing glasses as a form of self-expression, let alone the privilege of having eyeglasses at all. But the harsh reality is that for billions of people alive today, glasses and eye care as a whole is similar to how it was 800 years ago. As a result, the World Health Organization has estimated that the lack of proper eyewear costs the global economy more than $200 billion annually in lost productivity. But more importantly, it means kids are left to struggle in school and adults are unable to work safely. While poor eyesight is not as deadly as health concerns like malaria, sanitation, and energy access, helping people see is an easy and impactful fix that does not require developing vaccines, cures, or building expensive infrastructure. Eyesight on the whole is getting worse, and it is estimated that by the year 2050, almost half of the global population will be nearsighted. So finding ways to ensure everyone has access to eyeglasses and eye care is critical. Mundane objects can contain big stories, and these eyeglasses had a lot to say. What other stories might they tell? Thanks for watching, and please consider supporting us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and becoming a member of the Campbell Museums.